what is going on good people of youtube it is me chavez back with another prize picks video for you thursday february 2nd 2023 we have a seven game nba slate and the prize picks board is starting to fill out which is great still not all teams are represented but we do have enough props to scroll through and um you know start digging into uh some research here so with that being said I do have my eyes on a few players that I believe are in positive game environments that can um, produce for us and hit these lines. And um, I also have one player who's not shown on this on the screen who has uh, whose props have not been added to the board. So let's just get this started. Let's just keep let's just get this started. Let's just keep the uh, keep the momentum going here. Uh, I want to start with LeBron James over 28 and a half points versus the Indiana Pacers. He, he's chasing a scoring record. He's he's trying to get this done in the next three games, and um, every point every point always counts. But they count extra special with this record that he's chasing, and it's very important to him. He's taking it very seriously, and I believe he's going to go out over the next three or four games and try to. Um, and just try to just destroy the other team um, by way of making shots, <laughs> not physical punishment. So yeah, LeBron James over 28 and a half points. Let's take a look at the defensive numbers and see how they support this play. You got Indiana Pacers giving up the third most points in the NBA. Well, actually, let's filter that out. They are actually not giving up the third most most points. They are giving up the six most points. Okay, still not good. Uh, but they are giving up the third highest percentage in terms of three-point shots. Look at that, 37% a game. Oh, that's a lot. They are not a good team. And when I look at the other side, when I see LeBron James and I look at the other team, I don't see anybody on the Indiana Pacers that can stop him. Who are who is going to guard him? Miles Turner has length and he can slow him down, but I just don't think that he's going to be able to do it, especially with Anthony Davis back in the lineup. I mean, that front court is much different with him. And now you got some depth with Thomas Bryant and Ruby Hachimura. It just makes it just makes LeBron's job easier. So I like LeBron tomorrow night over 28 and a half. Two props that are not on the board that I am interested in from him are his three point shots. If these, if those three point shots uh, drop at 1.5, I believe we should take that. And I'm also interested in his fantasy score. I'm also interested in his fantasy score when that when that drops. Unless it's dropped already, and I just don't know. No. Well, let me get out of first half. Let me get out of first half. Yeah, so no fantasy score. So right now we're sticking with 28 and a half points for LeBron James. Next play uh, also plays in Los Angeles, but the other Los Angeles is it's Kawhi Leonard over 27 and a half points versus Milwaukee. This is like the uh, the late night hammer, right? And you have two really good teams playing each other. You have a you know, you have a Clippers team that is starting to get healthy again. Their two superstars are available. And um, if I mentioned this in the last video, if we are seeing the return, if these last few games is this is like the, the returning of Kawhi, like finals MVP Kawhi, like the NBA is in trouble because people forgot about him because of his injuries and he's been out for so long and now that he's getting healthier and he's playing in back to back and he's putting up 30 points a game he's playing almost 40 minutes a game yeah no restrictions um and he's playing against Giannis I think Kawhi gets very excited when his team plays another team that has a mega star like that on it I think it's just that the competitive nature between two alphas they want to be the ultimate alpha. And I think that's what uh, is going to happen tomorrow. It should be a playoff atmosphere. Maybe even some, you know, analysts have these two teams meeting, meeting in the NBA finals. They might get dubbed as a preview of the finals. So, yeah, it, it should be a pretty good game. It should be a lot of fun to watch. But I'm going to be watching more closely uh, over his points. 
And then I also like his PRA. When I started doing my research this afternoon and just looking at Kawhi Leonard's um, game log over his PRA, um, you know, just doing all the math, like he's averaging 40 PRA. And then looking at like the lower numbers and like kind of what went wrong in these games, why didn't he get over 40? Um, you know, I thought that, um, you know, I thought that when the line dropped, when I started, you know, kind of adding up everything before props that cash had this line available, I told myself if this PRA drops anywhere between 38 and a half to 40, 40 and a half, I'm going to take it. And it's actually on the low end of, of, of that range. So I'm surprised it's not a little higher. But I am interested in this for sure. Also, his his fantasy score. Anybody who contributes that much in the steals and blocks department needs to be fantasy score um, worthy. Like, you have to consider them for a fantasy score. Because those steals and blocks add up. I mean, he had like seven steals and blocks versus Chicago. That's 21 points alone. <laughs> That's crazy. That's like another person's like score. There's like two people... He had like two people score. Like, yeah, he produces on a, on a high level. So yeah, love the PRA, love the points, and I will probably love the fantasy score as well. Mason Plumley, two props for you to consider here: over full game points of thirteen and a half, and then over full game PRA. Also, I'm interested in his first half and his first half PRA because it is set to thirteen, and to me that is too low. I mean, that's too low. These two teams have met recently. I think they met a few days ago, three days ago. He put up 38 PRA. Um, yeah, I mean, he just had a really good game versus Vucevic, who's not the best defender. Okay. The game prior to that, he only played 25 minutes, put up 27 PRA due to blowout. Charlotte was also without Rozier and Ball. And they just got beat bad. Even the Chicago starters didn't log 30 minutes. I think a lot of them got pulled. So now Charlotte's healthy. Um, they're still not that good of a team, but they're more competitive. They're staying in games. They can take a lead, you know, stuff like that. So I'm interested in Plumlee's um, PRA and interested in Plumlee's points as well as first half PRA. And the gentleman who I said is not listed on the board, but who I wanted to share uh, some stats uh, over is Michael Porter Jr. So Michael Porter Jr. interested in his first half PRA. First half points. Um, those two, I want to I want to see what Prize Picks drop those drops those at because if the PRA for him is under twelve, I'm I'm taking that. And if his points are under under ten, I mean if they're nine point five, I take that. Uh, if they're over 10, um, I'll think about that. But I've noticed in the past that Price Picks does does prop Michael Porter Jr.'s first half numbers a little low. And he has been exceeding these numbers. And I know because I've been playing Michael Porter Jr. in the first half a lot because he is just a first half stat stuffer. Um, digging a little deeper over the last five games, he is averaging 15 minutes, 9 points, 4 rebounds alone in the first half that's 13 pra right there in 10 in his last 10 games seven of those games he's hit double digit points in the first half golden state's coming on a, coming off a, a tough loss today they'll be on the back to back i don't know what to expect from them obviously they're going to show up and compete but I, I, I question if they'll put up the same type of game that they put up against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Those tough losses take a lot out of basketball teams, man. They're draining. And so we could see they'll come out a little flat. Even better, Michael Porter Jr. just needs to hit his first half stats. And whatever happens after that, I don't really care. So those are some early, early looks, observations that I have for you all uh, for tomorrow's seven-game slate in the NBA. Mason Plumley. Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James and then um, Michael Porter Jr. So really quick, I just want to extend a super heartfelt thank you to everybody who has been supporting this channel, everybody who has been stopping by, watching, liking, subbing, leaving comments. Ladies and gentlemen, 
this channel has hit 1,000 subs, and I'm excited about this. The first of many milestones to come, and um, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for helping me get there. Truly, truly appreciate your support. Truly appreciate the comments you leave. I try my best to get to all your comments. You know, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy interacting and, and just leaving comments myself. So keep them coming. Uh, I really, really enjoy doing this and breaking down these games and digging into the research and providing this for you. Uh, this shit's fun to me. So thank you so much for allowing me to do that. And uh, again, thank you so much for helping me get to 1,000 subs. Super excited. All right. Thank you for stopping by the channel, checking this video out. Leave me a comment below letting me know who you have your eyes on uh, for tomorrow's slate. If you've already locked somebody in, let me know what that prop was. Um, also, let me know in the comments below what you think about these early looks and observations over tomorrow's slate. LeBron, Kawhi, Mason Plumlee, Michael Porter Jr. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you love them? Do you want to leave them? Either way, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what's on your mind. Thank you once again for coming by the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and just chilling out with me, talking some basketball props. And until the next video, the final look video, video number two, Chavez is out.